Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 30 minute session for clients. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing for their sacral chakra. I wanna thank you so much. This is to the client. Really appreciate an opportunity to support you today. Thank you so much for this. Thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. There's so much we're going to be able to learn from you. And when I heal you, you are healing me, you're healing everybody else, so we're all benefiting from this experience. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna relax now and get tuned in and keep the door open for anything that comes up that we can really nurture you, support you, heal you, help you feel the sacredness of yourself blossoming forward. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna relax now. <sighs> okay. Okay. <sighs> All right, so I'm putting it out to the universe here. Wanting to follow the pathway to heal your sacral chakra deeply, deeply heal you, deeply help you. Heal what needs to be healed, learn what needs to be learned. Well, right now, it's almost like you can have a cookie cutter, has any kind of shape, right? Maybe it's a star, maybe it's a circle. This cookie cutter isn't really a clear shape, it's just a blobulous shape, but it cuts out the shape. And what is it cutting out? It's not dough, it's uh, some kind of slime substance. And it's not like slime that Kind of maybe you pull it apart and it sinks on down. It's got like some density to it. So it kind of holds its structure fairly well. It's black and maroon in color. And then there's a lot of it. And then we take this cookie cutter and then we just press it into in order to create the shape we want. And then we just let go of the extra. But it doesn't necessarily say that. And we're just creating boundaries or recreating the outline. And then I guess... What does the material represent? What's the, the cookie cutter shape? Perhaps it's as best we can understand the shape maybe you're trying to mold yourself into. But if you're trying to mold yourself into this shape, you know what the boundaries are. And everything that's outside the boundaries isn't really you. Isn't really the material you want to work with. So you're not like all this everywhere. You're just this, okay? You're just this information. This is the key information. So that's what I'm seeing here. All right, gotta, <laughs> gotta take a minute to listen and make sense of some more of what we're looking at. Oh, well, this cookie cutter, kind of pleasant. The word cookie cutter, it makes you think of grandma's house, at baking cookies and maybe a certain holiday you really like. It, it actually is painful, okay? So cookie cutter presses in and then cuts away material. And so it's sawing or cutting you down to size, okay? Oh, man. All right, so I'm asked to take the sort of the pain conversation out. Keep it simple, just keep it simple. We're not going to attach too much to what am I doing to myself or what am I letting go of and oh my God, well, why am I doing this? Is um, They're asking me to just, just take the pain out and we're going to work with simple right now and we're just going to go with it. That we're, all we know is we're just going to go with it and it's safe to go with it and we're going to just let go of what we're going to let go of. It's easy. It's safe to let go of what we no longer need. It's like, here's a jug of milk and I'm going to drink it all until there's none left. But I'm going to hold on to this empty milk carton. I'm going to hold on to things. No, I'm going to let them go. I'm going to let them go. This is not a painful process. I can let it go. It is not hurting me to let it go. But if you build a relationship with the things that you're holding on to, it's like, milk carton, I love you forever. You're my special milk carton. You're one of thousands of milk cartons that I'm going to keep in my life forever. Now it's uh, unhealthy, right? 
because there's certain things that we're going to work with. And so we're going to work with those things. And then there's other things that don't need to work with those things anymore. We can let those things go. So they want to take the pain out of the conversation. Keep it simple. Just throw away the old milk carton. Just throw away the old stuff. It's safe to let it go. And we're going to work with this very small, oddly shaped remains of yourself. But we're going to see it as enormous and as infinite as the whole universe, okay? And so you're not just a small deal, you're a big deal, okay? Something about the size and shape of this and the cutting aspect is painful, but it seems like it's for all the right reasons. And energetically, that's what it means, okay? So I could say, oh my gosh, this is terrible. No, get rid of this. We got to keep all this stuff. Energetically, it says you're on the right track for letting go of things. That's what this means to me. There's a letting go process and you're on the right track. It seems like it's painful. But if we take the pain out of it, then you can do this. And actually what you're cutting away is, is good. It's healthy. Even if there's pain involved, it actually translates as healthy, okay? And then what you're working with now is the most substantial, most meaningful material of yourself that you could ever get your hands on, okay? That you could ever be. It's really good stuff, okay? So, all right, not easy. <laughs> I'm kind of in my own world and I'm like sort of whispering. Okay, I'm trying to pull and peel off this strange material that we don't need anymore, that it wants to cling and it wants to hold on to. But I let go of pain, I let go of pain, I let go of disturbing, okay? And we just, it's as simple. It's just like rolling up a carpet. It's no good. I mean, this carpet is saturated in mold. It's stinky. It's got dog pee on it, whatever. We're rolling it up. It's no good. We don't need to hold on to this. Let it go. So I'm just like, nope, we just need to roll it up, let it go, done. So I'm just seeing that we've achieved this, okay? Because there seems to me like a special approach here that's going to help you take the sort of emotional pain and the disturbing pain and the way that sort of, it's, it's almost like, if we can turn it into simple, then it is simple. It really is the simple, okay? And it seems like a little bit of speed. Just just get, get it done. Just get it out of there. Just get it, let it go. Hurry up. Like, if, if you delay, this is going to become emotional breakdown. <laughs> That's what I'm being shown here, okay? So rolling it up. Okay, it's done. Bam, done. This cookie cutter is a good thing. It's not a guillotine or the almighty sword that is going to kill you now or something. Okay. I'm actually kind of wiggling it off. So the material's gone. Now this cookie cutter's gone and all we have left is you. Okay. And you are made out of like black and maroon, jelly, jello-y kind of but it's, I mean, it's a solid material. It's not like, you know, you melt the cheese and then it's stringy or something. No, it's a solid material. I could flip it back and forth. I see. I don't know what shape you are. You just, like, draw a doodle of maybe a cloud or something. Maybe a leaf that was eaten by a caterpillar in some spots. But that's the shape and it's whole, represents a whole shape. I, I just, I tell God, I tell my guides, your guides, I say, I just, I feel like I don't, I don't know what else to say right now. Almost like I just, it's kind of like a staring off into the reality of some sort. And there's no real thought, no real words, no real understanding. So I'm just going to kind of solemnly pause. <laughs> hmm. Feels like a feels like there's a crying moment. Like a Okay, I'm going to help the crying moment to happen cuz it doesn't want to go there. It's like um I don't know, being very manly and watching a romantic movie, but
but then it gets you all teared up and you're not supposed to be teared up because you're manly and you don't cry in romance movies. You don't even watch romance movies. Just uh, let it go. Just It's okay to feel sad right now. There's a lot of cleanup work that was done very quickly and it's scary to see so much of yourself gone and the cookie cutter that just pressed in and it's all gone and what remains of myself. It's that sense of I don't even know who I am, but it's without words. It's like a ghost of a concept staring off into the nothingness, not really sure what's left of myself, right? That's the way this feels. And so it's not a certain emotion, but it does represent emotion is beneath the surface and tears are beneath the surface. So I'm going to help you just feel the tears. It feels like death. It feels like... Uh... <sighs> Like I see, you know, whenever I, whenever it gets into a, like a kind of an emotional vibration like this, it, it's like the loss, the ultimate loss. And then having to live with that. It makes me think of the Mrs. Jumbo and baby Dumbo. And here she is just locked up in this strange train cart. <laughs> Her, little, her trunk out the bars of the door, just trying to touch the trunk of her baby. And it's like this crazy, possibly sad, hard to believe how this happened. And it happened so swiftly. And now what? Imprisoned. Kind of like, what have I done? It's just a uh, hard to digest personal reality check moment. Okay. Okay, you're not able to cry, but something weird does happen. It looks like some material is growing around your head. It's orange in color. You don't have any hair, you just like, I don't know, maybe marshmallowy, like a orange marshmallowy pieces growing around your head, all connected, like you're wearing a weird hat. Hmm, something inside of you is sniffing, like you're sniffing something out. <laughs> Like that. Okay. Oh man, I don't know what to say about this. All right, I'm just, I'm gonna have to just acknowledge what I see. But there's a sense of apprehension, like, not good. This is not good. I don't know what that means yet, but I see like a Romeo and Juliet kind of scene and it's like Romeo and Juliet get married. They actually get married. Something is off with the timeline. The genuine story is they were star-crossed lovers. And these two are actually in love with each other, but divinely separated if for some cosmic reason, right? They're not meant to be together. You can argue with it all day long. They're not meant to be together. But they're together. Something isn't right about this. The next scene is there's this beast and he's more of a big spherical head, but he has a strong body. He may be like an action figure kind of body with a giant like planet head. It's all white. His whole body is all white, kind of metallic white. And there's some metallic black 
like creates uh, some sort of edging or shadow in certain parts, maybe to outline some biceps or maybe the crease between the elbow and the forearm or something. This beast, though, is somehow connected to Romeo and Juliet, Mary, but they're stuck in time, like the fairy tale ending that never goes anywhere. So let me just watch because I can't say much more than this just yet. I'm gonna have to ask questions. So I asked this beast, I say, what do you have to do with this Romeo and Juliet scene? And the beast shows me a picture of many golden arrows and they're the size of spears. Maybe like nine of them. And they're just flying. I like watch them like a rainbow just arc in the sky and they just fly up and then they come down and they rain down. Like these spears just like, like fall. And then they pierce into the earth and they just like and they're just there. I don't really know why. Shows me this golden arrows the size of spears arcing in the sky pierces the planet. Can't remove the spears, but when I try, I can see I'm pulling out flesh from the planet. Like the planet is a human body. I like pulling out fatty flesh pieces and chunks. But it's like the spear goes in forever. You'll never fully ever recover it. Even if it's, let's say, a, I don't know, spear is six feet or probably too long, maybe four feet or, or something, okay? And so we see these spears four feet in length each. And they pierce the earth, they only go in maybe a foot. But then when I pull it out, I'm just like pulling out this infinitely long spear and all these weird gross chunks are stuck to a like a kebab or something and it's gross and horrifying and it's shocking I say okay so this is what you've told me my response is pretty neutral. I mean, in order to interpret the scene, I, I have to explore my feelings about it. It is horrifying. But when I communicate with the beast, it's, it doesn't really tell me anything. What's your problem? Your problem is you can't remove the spears. Your problem is you threw them. Your problem is they weren't supposed to be infinitely long, pulling out chunks of the planet like it's a human body. Well, what's your problem exactly? What does this have to do with Romeo and Juliet? He's kind of like a statue, almost like I'm just supposed to know what that means. But I feel like he's lacking in understanding. And if he's lacking in understanding, he's not going to be able to help me understand than what he can't understand. <laughs> so I say that's okay. I say my conclusion is you don't really fully know. And I won't be able to then fully know either. But immediately he asks if I could try to say some kind of meaning about it. All right, let me be the planet for a second. Let me see. Oh, it's horrifying. It's like uh, acupuncture needles. So supposed to be a um, helpful solution, but they end up being morbid torture instrument instruments, okay? And was the intention healing or torture? And this beast is incapable of saying the answer to that. So it seems like it wants to say the answer is healing, but the truth is it was always torture. Was it intentionally torture? Yes or no? I 
doesn't want to answer these questions because if it answers them, then it's held accountable for those answers. If it's held accountable, then it might have to acknowledge that it is a bad thing. Or it could acknowledge that it was a mistake or it was an accident. Maybe it wanted it to be an accident, but the truth is it was purposefully creating suffering. And then if it could say, I purposefully was creating suffering, it's holding itself accountable, but it doesn't want to admit to being that kind of beast. I actually remove the beast and its message. I just pull it away. I put it in a container and I set it aside. It's not necessarily... It's important that there's communication with this energy in your sacral chakra. It's important that it's acknowledged. It's important that the word accountability is a part of that communication. It's important that part of that communication is you need to tell me what your relationship is with the problem. Is what you're showing me doesn't help me understand your relationship with what you are showing me because you don't want to have a relationship with it. You just want it to be this and then I'm supposed to tell you the answers. So this part of yourself, this part within yourself, it doesn't want to admit something to itself that it might have intentionally wanted to create harm. But it's, it's actually going to make things easier if it could just simply say it. Because if in that moment it did intentionally want to create harm, and now in the next moment it's starting to say, I didn't mean for it to be like this, it ended up being like this, I don't know how to live with myself now. I mean, we're starting to go through a process here of self-realization and reconciliation of of one's identity as a good or bad person. But if there's no ability to have an accountability of some kind for the bad side, then it's gonna be hard to actually heal it. But it gives it room to think, gives it room to reflect on being a good or bad person, basically. And we're talking about spears that go into the flesh of a human body and infinitely pull out bits of fat and fleshy pieces like a shish kebab it created unimaginable horrific pain so what does this mean to human life and day-to-day -day human life there's this a notch there in your sacral chakra that is about this conversation and it's it's just this right now but there's movement here because we're able to talk about this right now so this could be this life, this could be some other life, this could be some bigger picture or timeline of your soul wanting to understand this through a human lens, through this session. Just talk about it. So I want to go look at the Romeo and Juliet scene because this is interconnected with this beast. But if I move the beast over there, then it can just be this, okay? So I'm just going to look at this as though it's its own thing. Yeah, okay. I can't tell which is which. I can't tell if Romeo is the bad guy or Juliet is the bad girl or... It seems like it's supposed to be one or the other. It can't possibly be both. One is to blame. And... When I look at Juliet, she has like a vampire type appearance. She's bloodthirsty. She uh, sucks you dry of all your life force energy. She's evil. And when I look at Romeo, he's very self-absorbed and manipulative. And he's going to play her like a puppet. Because so she can behave like a vampire, but through his master manipulator skills, he's just puppeteering her. But the truth is, she's sucking the life out of him all along. And these two are lovers, the most profound lovers of all time. 
married. <laughs> but this is actually not correct. This is represents um, incorrect. This isn't Romeo and this isn't Juliet. And this is not a marriage either. Because that's not the way the story ends. This isn't a fairy tale ending. This is the messed up reality of sometimes destiny isn't ideal, you know? Star-crossed lovers, destiny isn't ideal. It's the saddest kind of destiny. But there's a lack in moving forward with that so that it could just be odd like an ornament on a tree and it's just a nice ornament on a nice trees nice christmas and whatnot and then put it in a box store it until next year just seems like um it doesn't want to embrace the way the, the truth is and this is where this beast starts to come back into the picture because now that I'm working through the Romeo and Juliet story, I'm starting to understand the beast. So the truth is it's not ideal. So I tell the beast the best you can do is say the truth is it's not ideal. The truth is it's not healthy. The truth is it's, it's kind of mortifyingly not healthy. But there's an inability to accept that. And so Romeo and Juliet should just be together, right? But that's not how the story goes. This isn't like Cinderella. This is Romeo and Juliet. This is a crash and burn scenario, you know? Inability to accept that. And so it's starting to help me understand that in, in, within the sacral chakra here, there's a real conflict about love. Painful love. Or love that last forever and who started it who did what and but the truth is it's 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 just is it meant to be is it not meant to be kind of like a destiny thing so romeo chooses to be the manipulator puppet master juliet chooses to be a bloodthirsty vampire okay they're not meant to stay together it's not how the story goes Somehow this is important and it is impacting your heart. And it goes back to the Mrs. Jumbo imprisoned scene. And what is going to mend her heart? What is going to make it right? What is ever going to make it right? It's criminal, right? It's, it's freaking criminal. But in that story, it's the right thing to do. I mean, that elephant went mad. We got to protect everybody from that mad elephant. It was the right thing to do. But to Mrs. Jumbo, this is criminal. She was just protecting her, her child from the cruelty. There's some matters of the heart here. So your sacral chakra and your heart are trying to navigate some pretty deep conversations about love and maybe love in a a reconciled way, a balanced, healthy way, a harmonious way. But then what is the reality of things, you know? What if Mrs. Jumbo being in that prison was the best thing that could have ever happened? How, how could we understand why it was the best thing that could have ever happened? Well, watch Dumbo. He found his independence and found out what he was really born to be, which is incredible. And so everything that is bad has a way of becoming good. But we have to let the bad be the bad so it can guide us on the path to good, you know? Romeo and Juliet don't have to stay together. Even if we wanted them to, maybe we're doing their souls an injustice. Because we can't accept that for them then we need to work on ourselves, right? Because sometimes the injustice is guiding us to something more beautiful and we need to give it time, you know? 
some pretty intense sacral chakra messages right there. So let me see. You know, you're okay with the material that's left of yourself. And you're learning how to grow the good material or the material that you are. It seems like you're wanting to kind of trim the edges of what you don't want to keep with you. It's like, we don't need the old jug. It's not doing you any good. It's like, um, you don't need uh, aspects that aren't empowering you. They're not bringing out the best in you. It's okay to cut away the edges, you know? But then what do you have left? You have actually the most significant material of yourself and then you grow upon that material and you flourish, you know? You're starting to feel a lot more okay with you. Okay with you, okay? And that's important, you being okay with you. So the rest of the world can think whatever it wants to think, but if you're okay with you, that's a freaking powerful place to be. It's an admirable place to be. And maybe this session is really to give you permission to be okay with you and to work with the material that you're working with and continue to work on growing what is the best of yourself, you know? And some of that is going to take some, some raw and real conversation like the Romeo and Juliet and the Beast and all that. Some raw conversation. And it's okay to be every character in the story. The characters you like, the characters you don't like, the complicated scenarios, and it's okay. <laughs> you know, that's just part of the story. And be the best you can be, no matter what. Helps you to love yourself more and you'll find some kind of genuine, something genuine blooming in your life because of all of this. It's not artificial, it's what I'm trying to say. It's not shallow or artificial, it's, it's, it's true. It's true to you, it's authentic to you. It's the real material. You do say something to me that you don't know how to be more and you see yourself as so much less. So you, you like, let's see, you see yourself as an inch and you'd like to see yourself as, I don't know, a mile. <laughs> you don't know how to grow this inch into a mile. You just don't know how. And, and so there's something about you working with you and loving you and learning how to bring out more of you so that you can feel like a mile's worth more and 10 million miles worth more. And now you feel like you're the universe universe of yourself, you know? So how do you do that? You're kind of asking me this question. So let me see. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm just touching the material. I'm kind of exploring how do we grow this? I mean, the obvious answer is time, but I want to look for something not so obvious. I'm always, so my guides are kind of shaking their head because I'm always looking to cut corners. <laughs> okay, how can we take the next 20 years of your life and turn it into five days? Like, <laughs> and then and we'll take all that time of, of learning and growth and development and then we'll do it all in five days. And then we'll take that five days, span it out 20 years, like, bam, there we go. But they're just like the authentic time though. The time that it takes to authentically be human in a lifetime is how you grow that material. <laughs> There's no shortcuts. You're going to have to just authentically be you and keep authentically being you day after day after day after day. And if the Mrs. Jumbo scenario happens to you, or if the baby Dumbo scenario happens to you and you have to find your courage and your independence and see what you're made out of, right? Mrs. Jumbo, what is she going to do in that prison? She's going to be very sad, but she needs to have faith 
that her separation from Dumbo is actually the best thing that could have happened for him. And there's an unexpected blessing in it for her, right? But there's so many more stories, good, tolerable stories or intolerable ones. And you can authentically find yourself in any one of these stories, a character. And some people like that character and some people don't like that character, but can you like yourself? Can you love yourself? So they're saying there's no shortcuts. You need day after day, year after year. And you're doing all the right things by letting go of what's not serving your purpose and really working with the material that is. And it, it does show that there's some pain involved with that. There's literally some pain. Like you're separating from yourself, but actually you're letting go of what no longer serves your purpose. It would be like painful to throw the trash away. It would be like cutting your arm off or something to throw a bag of trash away. But we're taking the pain out and we're trusting that this letting go is actually so healthy and so empowering and so brilliant. And it's your authentic you. And so one day at a time, okay? So <laughs> that's what I have. Really cool session. Really good messages. My gosh. I mean, that's sacral chakra, I tell you. That's a pretty deep dive, and there's some vulnerabilities that get lodged in there, but the more you clear, the more you clear out, you just feel clean. You feel sparkly, you feel breathable. There may be some things to think about in there, right? But you can think about it, that's always good, but you can also spend some time just not having to make sense of it and just letting the energy work do the work, you know? So thank you again. Thank you everybody for watching. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, I'd be happy to support you with any goals at all, mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, any questions, anything. I share psychic wisdom and energy healing. You can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Have a great day, everybody.